Yo, yo, this is Frenchie, and this is my top 50 records of 2017. Just to clarify that EPs and studio albums are eligible, but compilations and live albums are not. This video is going to be part one, so make sure you check out the next lot. Uh, so let's get on with it. This is my favourite Bjork album since Volta. Her previous album, Volna Cure, was really dark, sad, and haunting. It was a breakup album. But on the contrast, this one's a lot more positive, heartwarming, and uplifting. On the previous album, she worked with electronic producer Arca on a few tracks. But this time, she's brought him along for the whole album. I think that's a great move because he's a fantastic producer. And Arca's personality shines through a lot more here as well. So it's a, a true collaborative record. Like I said, it's got a very positive sound. It's a long album, but I feel like the way it's sequenced, it almost feels like one giant song. Um, the sound palette is very similar, but it's full of these strange sounds. You've got harps, flutes, nature sounds like dolphins that paint such a strange yet fascinating atmosphere like you've crash landed on this beautiful alien planet. This is the second full-length album from Canadian electronic producer Daphne, aka Caribou, aka Dan Snaith. Unlike Caribou, which has expands into a band and has more instruments, this is very much more of a solo outing. House and techno influences much more into the forefront, but maintaining a lot of the pitch shifting and the signature sounds that makes Caribou so exciting. Flows really well and it's full of energetic tunes that will get your body moving. Really enjoyed this fantastic noise, power electronics arm from Pharmacon. She's making her most droney, looping tracks in her discography. And the whole album feels like a descent into some twisted, nightmarish realm. Her violent screams really grab your attention. And the use of noise pedals, electronics, and contact mic recordings on various items all comes together really well. Yeah, definitely one of the most interesting and out-of-the-box noise albums I've heard this year. I'm always interested in anything that Parquet Courts do. I think they're absolutely fantastic. One of the best sort of American indie rock bands going right now. And they've thrown another interesting curveball with us by collaborating with Danielle Lupi, just bringing a lot more sort of synthy electronic touches to Parquet Courts usually do. For Parquet Courts, there's less of that noisy, abrasive, punky side of them coming through. But the more laid-back, slacker rock vibes are really strong here. And they've got some of the catchiest and funkiest tunes that they've ever done. There's even a like a like their own reimagining of uh, Bob Dylan's uh, Stuck Inside a Mobile, which is a real highlight. And the last track is fantastic. This really off-kilter, noisy jazz rock piece uh, comes out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, Parquet Courts come through again. Introduce me to Danielle Lupe, who I'll have to seek out more. <music> Gotta hand it to Mark Kozalik for managing to appear on my, my best albums list and my worst albums list in the same year. Uh, <laughs> that shows you where his head's at. Uh, right now but his fourth and final album of 2017 thank god is actually my favorite of his uh, this collaboration with jim white and ben boy goes far away from the folk rock that we're used to into into more of this freeform malleable jazz rock sound and i feel like with mark koslick's new style of doing this almost rap influenced freeform stream of consciousness lyricism i feel like he really stepped up to the plate hearing him sort of improvise lyrics over these improvised jazz sounds is a, a great pairing this is the album i enjoyed of his the most this year but he still needs to pare it down you know take take his time between releases more Shout out to Bargo08. We've created this fantastic album. This Tunisian ensemble bring tribal horns and drums, but create these massive booming drums, funky as hell grooves. This album is a huge delight, full of vocal gymnastics and these pounding rhythms. Uh, even had a bit of a post-punk influence going on. Yeah, this is one of my favorite surprises of the year. 
Street Sects follow up their fantastic debut album M Position with the Rat Jacket EP. It's less violent and noisy, but Street Sects going into a more gothic, post-punk inspired direction uh, works really well. I really enjoyed this. Even though the production's a little bit cleaner, a little bit fuller, I think the end results are fantastic and it makes a really good accompaniment to that full-length album which you should definitely check out as well. And in a similar vein of noisy, industrial, punky, abrasive material, we have Uniform with their album Waking Fright. This American duo almost channeling a influence of Suicide and Alan Vega with this playing these nasty, filthy, punky chords over these stuttering industrial beats and with the topped off with these aggro as fuck vocals. If you listen to this album, you're in for a gnarly time. One of the ugliest and most vicious metal and hardcore releases of the year is the Bork EP by Mastiff. This band just suffocate you in dense production, a great mixture of slow discordant sludge riffs and fast paced grind influence riff. They teeter the balance between the two really well and topped off with Jim Hodges vocals which just sounds like he's eating you alive, uh, eating your fucking face off. I'm going to follow that up with another APF Records release. Uh, the debut EP from Baal. Baal? Baal? I don't know them. This uh, Sheffield-based quintet combined elements of uh, atmospheric sludge metal, post-rock, and even some faint influences of, like, 2000s emo metalcore cropping in there. Uh, that I noticed. It, it sounds really fresh. The EP consists of three really progressive, emotive, and beautifully textured, dynamic songs, uh, full of fury, but also with a lot of prettiness there as well. But I'll really straddle that line between like fierceness and melodicism, almost like almost like recent Deftones material. Uh, really dug this debut album from Pessimist. If you like really dark, hypnotic, banging industrial techno, you definitely need to check this one out. Yeah, the ominous simps on this thing just swallow you up in this nightmarish atmosphere. And it's full of slow pounding, almost like trap beats, but they've sort of been like warped and disfigured. Solid debut effort there from tr Pessimist. Morris celebrate their 25th anniversary in style by bringing one of their all-out ballsiest, heaviest albums in a while. They've sort of went off and experimented with some softer, more atmospheric sounds, but now they've come back with a, a true drone, doom, sludge behemoth of a record full of slow-paced drums, screaming guitars, and, and enough fuzz to melt your face off. Uh, Finnish band Circle definitely released one of the strangest rock albums of the year. Not only is this thing full of great riffs, but it's full of wild, eccentric sounds, multi-vocal extravaganza, like these psychedelic, stonery, epic tracks that just flourish in utter madness, like, like they just tore up the rule book and anything goes with this thing. Really worth checking out. The debut album from Helpless, not only my favourite album sleeve of the year, but dug the shit out of this album as well. Uh, this grindcore, hardcore, noisy, sludgy, almost mathcore tinged trio deliver this concise, ballsy, 10-track album. Don't think it even breaches the 20-minute mark, just how grindcore should be. I'm really impressed with not only the not only the sounds on this album, but lyrically it uh, seems to be like a concept album about consumerism. Definitely a strong uh, Jane Doe era Converge influence on this. Absolutely face ripping. And we have a debut album from Dawn Raid. 
very political, almost punk influenced black metal band from from Liverpool. They channel these really folky sounds. Reminds me of Ulva's first album. Has this beautiful, sorrowful sound, which is only enhanced by their frontman's excellent violin playing. This guy's screams are absolutely divine. They just uh, they just grab your attention, mesmerizing stage presence as well. Yeah, I see big things in this band's future. Check him out. Ambient and orchestral composer Max Richter follows up his eight hour sleep project with uh, just a single disc album inspired by the works of Virginia Woolf. And once again, Richter brings some stunning chord progressions, gorgeous melodies, I love the way his music balances a perfect line between orchestral and ambient music. Reaving in and out of both styles. Just a beautiful album to listen to at night on headphones and, and drift away to. This debut album from Dystopian Future Movies. On the one hand, this is a really dark and haunting album. But it's got also a lot of colour and pretty textures on it. Caroline Corley's vocals are absolutely soothing and ethereal. Definitely got some Chelsea Wolf comparisons in there. They tease you with these really alluring songs that just ebb and flow really naturally, playing around with sort of the post rock blueprints, but making things more concise and immediate. Really good release. Uh, this second album from Space Witch really strips the band down to their essentials. It's a shorter record than the last one, but just as hard hitting and mind blowing. This sort of heavy psych sludge metal band are absolutely hypnotic, pouring 70s sounding sci fi Doctor Who synths into their riffs. Uh, so it's not only heavy, but it takes you on this, this cosmic journey. And the addition of Peter Callahan's vocals adds a whole new layer to this band that wasn't there before. So yeah, fantastic to see this band progressing even further with their sound. Employed to Serve return with their second album. Just a much bigger beast than the first one. Not quite as chaotic, but they've explored more of the, the dynamics, more interesting song structures. This type thing has riffs up the ass. Like, so many ball-busting moments on this album. Yeah, they've just delivered something more. Just more. Just more colourful, bigger, more explosions. The perfect sequel. This full-length debut album from electronic producer Special Request really struck me this one. It's actually a double album. The first disc is full of hard-hitting, really versatile productions, taking in influences of techno, trap, drum and bass, jungle. It's a real, a real mixed bag, but the results are really consistent. The album flows really well. And to top it off, the second disc is this really different. It's this beautiful majestic ambient music uh no beats at all just these heavenly floaty synth sounds really uh the makings of a really intelligent and forward-thinking electronic producer i'm really looking forward to hearing more from special request <laughs> at uk black metal trio fen deliver their most ambitious conceptual album yet feel like they've uh, taken some influence from this new wave of post black metal bands like Death Heaven, Oathbreaker, Svalbard by just uh, delivering not only great black metal tunes but taking more from other genres like a little bit of prog, shoegaze, atmospheric rock, fleshing out what they're already great at and pushing their sound even further. Uh, this is a fantastic release. It flows almost like one giant piece of music, telling this epic story with music. A fantastic debut album and another stunning release on Holy Raw Records. They're, they're cropping up on my list a lot. Ren, uh, I guess you could say they're like Britain's answer to Sumac, delivering just not this raw, gnarly sludge metal sound. And it's atmospheric without meandering too much into like clean guitar sections like Isis did. Like 
this is just balls to the roll, crushing riffs after crushing riffs, but with enough dreaminess and texture to add something more to the mix. I didn't have much expectations for this Goldie comeback album. I mean, you know, Goldie's great, but it's not as if the world was screaming out for him to return. So, but when I gave her a listen, I was really, really knocked back by this album. One of the most diverse things he's ever done. Not just full of fantastic atmospheric drum and bass tunes, amazing pristine production, massive synth sounds, those amazing uh, female vocal samples, but He's gone further, he's explored into hip-hop, neo-soul, funk, even a bit of like wonky sort of what records inspired uh, ambient techno kind of stuff as well. Love this thing from start to finish, it's a massive album, it's probably over two hours long, over two discs, but damn, like, he's cooked up something really special here, uh, great comeback record. I just don't know how Celeste do it every time. This French blackened sludge metal band, they they don't really change up their formula much from album to album, but regardless, they just managed to knock my socks off. This band are just relentlessly heavy, like one of the most savage, nihilistic, miserable bands on the planet. From start to finish, they batter you to death. There's barely any breaks or, or come downs in their music. It's just a violent onslaught of utter brutality and it's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful you need to hear this american noise industrial hip-hop outfit dalek they've come back in style they did like a mini lp the year before this but this feels like much more fleshed out it's probably more hip-hoppy than some of the classic albums like absence for example there's still plenty of noise and chaos and weirdness going on full of bangers the rhymes are already inspired Probably the hungriest they've sounded since the Abandoned Language album, and uh, this album makes a great sort of great sort of sonic follow-up to that album. Yeah, yeah, fantastic uh, return from Dalek. I really adored this uh, collaborative folky album from Courtney Barnet and Kurt Vile, two brilliant songwriters in their own right, but put them together, and it's just a match made in heaven. They. Their chemistry is so natural, they just blend together really well. One of the most special moments on this album is actually Courtney Barnet doing her own rendition of uh, Kurt Vile's Peepin' Tomboy. She absolutely nails this, uh, just as quality as his original version. One of the best collaborative albums of the year, for sure. Blank Mass's second album, World Eater, he's just gone next level with his sound, building on what he accomplished with his great first album and delivering much bigger, more epic scale tracks and even darker, more apocalyptic. Uh, the second track on this album is nine minutes long and it even even as uh, elements of like black metal with these throat shredding vocals and these fast, intense drums, I think he's just took everything that worked on his first album and just just added much more to the palette and it's come off really well. Uh, this might be the only demo on my list, but damn, I've listened to this album loads this year. Um, this is the debut release from Still. They combine sort of elements of sludge metal, post-hardcore, and very direct emo tinged uh, lyrics and vocals but they have this massive textural atmospheric sound and these massive songs full of dynamic songwritings riffs that change up and really interesting melodic textures and also plenty of eeriness and dissonance as well this is a fantastically strong debut release like this band if they can keep up this momentum then they're going to be real contenders Chelsea Wolf, it's just getting better and better. Her albums are getting heavier. The production's getting deeper. Her voice is absolutely fantastic, gothic, ethereal. Uh, she makes everything on this album just sound effortless. She's full of amazing riffs, songwriting chops. She's getting even deeper and more personal with her lyrics. And 
creating this fantastic dreamy surreal atmosphere to go with it yeah one of the most consistent recording artists of the decade and that leads us nicely into the new Merca album I feel like Merca's first album and her debut EP had a lot of potential but also plenty of hit and miss moments but I feel like with this second full length album Merca's really come into her own and she knows what exactly what her sound is now and this album just is the best flowing, best produced, best written out what material she has made. A lot of this album leaves the metal realm completely. It almost sounds like the ethereal wave bands of the 80s, like Cocteau Twins. Definitely a strong Dead Can Dance vibe. Uh, some of her majestic clean singing vocals definitely channeling Lisa Gerrard here. She's found the formula that works for her and she's made her best release yet. Well, thank you for listening to my best albums, numbers 50 through to 21. Make sure you tune in to the top 20 as well, which will be in another video. Uh, thanks very much. Please like, share, subscribe if you like what you hear. And definitely let me know what you think of my choices. Let me know some of your top albums of the year as well. Cheers. See you next time.